Today, I'm going to be talking with an old friend, Kevin Myers. Kevin and I go back probably 17 or 18 years when I was early in technology and he was just coming off his engagement with Cold Stone Creamery in helping build that brand. Kevin has been a force to be reckoned with in the marketing industry for the last 20 plus years. And uh, his experience in new and emerging markets has been well proven. And uh, the work that he does today is truly fascinating. Kevin's the CMO of a company called AI Advertising, and they use AI, data lakes and structured data, to uh, determine how to deliver the best message to you, the consumer. Um, I was really fascinated by this episode. I've talked about this episode more than probably anything else in the past couple of weeks. I'm excited to bring it to you because I think it will change the way you see AI and the way AI is going to affect each and everything we do in our lives. All right, here we go. All right, welcome back to another edition of The Convergence. I hope you have been paying attention the last couple of weeks because we've been talking a lot about AI, particularly with the introduction of ChatGPT into the market and the disruption that that has caused. A lot of people think AI is like a new thing now. It is not a new thing. It has been around for a very long time. Uh, and today, my guest is Kevin Myers. Uh, Kevin is the chief marketing and chief product officer for a company called AI Advertising that's been in this game for a while. And I'm excited to have him here because Kevin and I go way back. I don't think we had gray beards when we first met, Kevin. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Uh, I didn't have a beard. This is a, <laughs> you're the beard guy. So I'm just, I'm I have just always been the beard. I, yes. I'm thinking, let, let's, let's figure this out. So um, I think you were advising UGMO at the time. I was running a sustainability company called Green Nurture. That, this was probably 2008, 2009. Imagine that, uh, focusing on Mother Earth with technology. Exactly. Right. right? <laughs> so Kevin, it was a long time ago. And at that time, you know, it's really funny because I think you introduced me to, um, what, did you introduce me to Pat Sullivan? Yes. I think it and was. Yeah. Yep, and yeah, and yeah. I know yeah, many others. Right. But I remember at yep. that time I had this company green nurture that was this internal communication platform, uh, for people to communicate about sustainability inside their company. And I ran into Pat like five years after that whole thing went belly up. And he, and all he said is he said, I remember you're, you're the guy that created Slack before Slack created Slack. And I stood there for a minute and I was like, Holy crap, Newman. I did. He's like, I always, he's like, as soon as Slack came out, I was like, I remember that guy, that Derek guy that yep. Kevin introduced me to that created that thing way back when. And I was like, oh my God, I just I missed it by this much. You, know? <laughs> so, you could, you could, you could have a whole episode on Newman moments. I know. <laughs> well, Kevin, welcome. Okay. It's great to, to have you here. Yeah. D Derek, here's the lesson for you and I. And I got it from my brother, Phil. Uh, all those things are just a setup for the next thing. It's true. That's it. I mean, listen, you know, we're going to talk about this. And actually, this yes. is a very good point, Kevin, because I think some of the opinions that I have on AI, people say to me, well, AI will never get, you know, ingenious new ideas. And I'm like, there are no new ideas. Everything is extrapolation on the data that you have. There were no cavemen that were creating rockets and going to the moon, right? There's an iterative process that goes along. And I believe a lot of what AI can do is it, it, it can take that AI process and speed it up considerably. So uh, let's talk a little bit about you and your background. I mean, you you were back in the old Cold Stone Creamery days helping make that brand. You, you've been around the, you deserve the gray beard you have as do I. <laughs> tell me a little bit about your back. Tell, tell the, the, the folks a little bit about your background, Kevin, where you come from. Well, it's... Uh, and please it's don't mention Ohio State University. I mean, nobody wants to hear about that, that shit. And and you you realize that I I parked myself right here just for that subliminal uh, broadcast of, of being uh, look at I'm I'm uh, arguably uh, stupid about a few things or crazy I should say the Buckeyes uh, and uh, math engineering yeah. and uh, and my faith and uh, yeah. but the the thing about the uh, my background is is that I am an engineer it goes back to even working with my dad. Uh, we had projects, you know, six kids in Pittsburgh, you and I are from the Oh, yeah, that's right. We're Berg boys. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and it was all about doing a project. And so yeah. that was my passion. And uh, and it led me to get an engineering degree. So what's an engineer doing running marketing? 
and being trusted with marketing and advertising because it's all theory mm. and it's, you know, it is math. It's like, it's, I have a thesis in this case, I want to change your mind about something. Mm. How can I do it better? How can I do mm. it faster? How can I do it cheaper? So uh, I got an engineering degree. It's uh, industrial engineering, which is process driven yeah. and uh, spent a, a good part of my career in sales, which I think is critical for anybody that really has to have empathy and a bit of ego there. Um, and it led me to marketing and, uh, marketing and tech is where I found myself, uh, part of a lot of good software companies. Ice cream for a while but, too. <laughs> well, the Cold Stone Creamer yeah. experience was still my best professional experience. Yeah. Uh, Doug Ducey grew that from a handful of stores to 1400, nine countries. And he entrusted me with trying to figure out how to uh, do marketing and advertising a little better. And, yeah. um, so. That led me into the kind of the CMO world. And there's a whole lot of fixing there to do in yeah. marketing and advertising. Um, I, I would argue I'm on the path to fix it so someday people don't have to advertise. Mm, now, interesting. if I have a company called AI Advertising, you might say, <laughs> you know, what are you doing there? It's because the end of the rainbow for any marketer that's trying yeah. to fix things is to be in relationship like mm. you and I are together, yeah, have them, yeah. so that we can share personal information so that when I leave this, I'm going to go tell people about Derek, yeah. word him out. That's right. That's right. That's the name of the game. So mm. all the things I believe that need to be fixed and engineered better is to uh, go and look at what the data tells you, what the math tells you, formulate a hypothesis, and then prove what works, what doesn't, and what's next. Let's let's pivot here and talk about this because you talked about marketing, you talked about engineering, um, you, you know, we talked about data, but I think a lot of times when I even talk to marketers and and I've you know had ad agencies call me and or, or I've talked to them at, at places I've given speeches and things and they're like, well, we we're creative, so we can't have a process, and I'm like, look, <laughs> just because your your qualitative does not mean that there isn't a quantitative element to your business. I think a lot of marketers think about things like, well, it just comes to us, right? When they're thinking about ideas and those kind of things, but there is a process and it is replicatable and it is reproducible. Let's talk about that because a lot of what you're doing with AI advertising is, is are you looking at metadata and then applying math to this? How does that work? So with, with what we're doing today, we start with data. We start with the, the CRM file, the customer file, don't yeah. care where it comes from. And uh, people brands know their customers by what they buy, but not who they are. Mm. So the process mm. starts by starting to get to the behavioral psychology around what do I believe? What do I need? What do I want? What do I desire? What triggers me? Okay. Now, Derek, the, the part that might scare some people is we're leaving that imprint everywhere every day <laughs> by what we do on these devices. Yes. And, and we have, we protect that we're never crossing a line, that this is Derek and what he does. But in aggregate, people that are on in that building on those screens are very predictable. So we're able to bring that science to the customer record to mm. start formulating personas about mm. psychographics, beliefs, triggers, values. We as human beings are very predictable. You know, wow. whether or not you like the Myers-Briggs 16 personalities or Big Five Ocean or, 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 uh, we are predictable human beings, but that's the journey. That's the starting point to say, talk to me based off of what my values are. What do mm -hmm. I believe? What do I want? That's the start of really insightful. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell a story that I, I, I now hack it, I'm sure. And I'm sure I've exaggerated it over the years, but it was something that you told me maybe five years ago. And I was saying something um, about how, you know, Facebook always seems to be listening. And I think you said something about, look, it's, it's not that Facebook is listening. It is that the data is so good that I can, that we know the month you're going to buy a mattress three years from now, we, it, it's already written in stone. Your destiny is already set out of when you're going to make these purchases. And marketers are just now smart enough to step in right at the moment where you start talking about a mattress. It isn't that they overheard you. It is literally that they knew you were going to start having the conversation before you had it. Now, I'm sure I'm exaggerating that story a little bit, 
but I think it, it brings a point, and I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Well, uh, people are surprised when they say, I was just talking about that. Well, yes, you were. Uh, and you likely were in amongst people that actually had a phone nearer on them ah, that actually had searched that subject in the recent past. So proximity matters. And, mm. and when you're discussing things matter and with whom. And so the signals there that in that place of business or that home, mattresses were talked about, or, or better than that, moving. Moving was talked ah, about. I see. So it's so, it's not even as much about the listening of the device. It's more, and there's, there could be some of that going on. I mean, I know Alexa's list. I shouldn't even say it when I'm on a podcast because she'll start talking. Yes. <laughs> but it isn't even as much about the listening of the device. It's just about the environment that you're in where those conversations are happening and the devices that people have present and the what they do after or before that conversation. Derek, there's a lot of people bothered by this conversation because, hey, who's watching? <laughs> well, right. I mean, here's the truth, is that uh, if we had to pay for everything we wanted, we'd be broke in the, mm-hmm. in the content, in media, entertainment, news, sure. uh, education. Uh, so what, what's the saying that uh, if, if you're not paying for it, you are the product? That's right. And, and you can That's change true. this. You could say, I'm turning everything off. But unless you're of the very, very wealthy ilk, you're not going to be able to get what you need. I was with a guy the other night. He's a billionaire. And uh, he gave me his phone number. And he explained to me, this goes to a machine with a cassette tape. And I checked it once a week. And I'm like, you don't have a phone? And he's like, I literally have no device on me whatsoever. I do not use a computer. I do not use any of these things. I have a phone that a lady checks for me or I check it once a week and I will call you back from my landline. <laughs> he's like, and, and now he's older. So maybe there's a little bit of, you know, I don't think Mark Cuban is like that, but surprisingly enough, this is an extremely wealthy individual, very well-known wealthy man. And he was like, not in a million years, would you catch me with one of those things? <laughs> Tells you well, something. If, if, if you're in that club and you can do it, I guess God bless you, but the rest of us grunts will uh, will go online and you know we'll, we'll we'll be entertained, we'll be uh, we'll read, we'll learn, we'll share, yeah. and yeah, and all that is a cost, and it just sure. so happens the ad industry underwrites it, and that's that's often something that's really really missed, is that mm-hmm. if you like what you're learning and seeing, and you're not mm-hmm. paying, thank the ad industry. That's a great point. So, 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 okay. So we've talked about that data. So this is really a math equation in the sense that there's tons of data out there that comes from phones. It comes from the internet. It comes from our buying habits, our credit card receipts, all of those kind of things. You're using AI to essentially extrapolate and make the decisions on what you should market and when you should market it. Is that a pretty good summary? Yeah. So uh, if you go to the daisy chain, the process, um, what I think that what I'm most proud about what we built is uh, workflow automation, because really it, it is all about kind of taking that first step to get uh, psychographic personal information about people. But what do you do with that? Well, Derek, you had a great episode on chat GPT. What you do with it is yeah. you take the insight and you now have a new prompt on how to ask the machine something better. Yes. Um, People that are worried that AI is going to take your job away, don't worry about that. Worry about the creative that's using AI that will mm. take your business away. Because yeah. Ooh, you, good you, point. Now have, you now have insights to ask the machine something better, smarter. Mm. We call it marketer plus machine. You still need the human being to interpret, ask the question better. You were going down on your last dialogue, you just kept making your prompt more specific and you got back very different things. I I did it the other day. I'm I'm in about 15 deep on a prompt right now for writing a book and I just keep coming back to it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like the name, but understand this person has German heritage, not Austrian heritage. Oh, and she'll rewrite the, and I'm talking about her in the first person, but you know, ChatGPT will rewrite it. Or I'm like, no, no, no. The age of, of the person she's speaking with is 43. This is not a millennial. And she changes the way that she, so you have to be good at the prompt engineering. And I've told friends that with, with kids in college, I'm like, 
Right now, the best job you can learn how to do is become a prompt engineer because if you become a master prompt engineer, and by prompt, I, there's two rules for me. You got to go at least five levels deep. Prompt should never be less than 50 words, which is, think about what we're used to doing on Google. Best Thai food. <laughs> you know, right. That is not going to get Where? you anywhere. I got to yeah. know, well, uh, based upon Thai Yelp reviews. Yeah, yeah. Or, but I but I want to know best Thai food where reviews on Yelp talk about spicy and from people that have visited Thailand in the last 36 months or were native born to Thailand and speak about the authenticity of the food. Like you got to get very detailed. And that is just not a way that Google has not taught us to seek to seek information that way. Well, I, you, you're articulating something a little bit differently than what I've said is that I, I believe the original artists are engineers. They took yes. zeros and ones and look what they made with them. <laughs> Engineers and thesis and prompts. Mm. We're, we're all need to become this. We need to, we need to come up with the point of view. Uh, we need to come up with the, the right way to ask the question. We need to go deeper and deeper and deeper. <clears throat> you and I, when we caught up recently, I told you that this is as old as math itself. It's it called is. the Euclidean algorithm. Yeah. And the Euclidean algorithm uh, postulates that the output of one thing is the input of the next. I use it all the so, time. Yeah. What's, we all use it. And it was, that, Derek, that was the beginning of math. Something else we mm. all do. The cavemen mm. did it. They copy what That's other right. people did. So yeah. this, is, this is all just machines allowing us to do it faster, better, and scale it. But, but we've been doing it since the dawn of time. And uh, now we're just all maybe someday going to become marketing engineers, in, in my words, to, uh, to do it better. I think that's a really great point. Let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more um, because you, you, you mentioned something earlier about, yes, there's the metadata about who we are and what our buying habits are. But I also think marketers truly need to understand, you know, why we behave as we do. And, and let's be honest, feeling, feeling is an important part of that. We've all seen an ad at some point, or we've all seen a piece of marketing or read something that really touched us. I always talk about the, um, the rescues, the animal rescues that use the Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin songs, right? I mean, you put Sarah McLaughlin yep. over anything and I guarantee you a big guy like me is is you know wiping his eyes at the end of the commercial because it's very yeah. difficult not to be emotionally moved by that. So how do you then take AI, which currently is not sentient? I would tell you that some of my guests are questioning. <laughs> some of the guests on the show are predicting that it might be a little sooner than we think. Currently not sentient, but able to look at information. You mentioned Myers Briggs, Culture Index, you know, Predictive Index, TTI, that understands the psyche of people and what makes them tick. How how do you apply that piece? How do you bring this personification back into this? How do you, how do you get down to that level? It gets deep, right? Um, <laughs> deep into your limbic brain. Um, I think most marketers are fans of Simon Sinek and his getting yeah. to why. People don't yeah. buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Okay, what is why? It's a feeling. Where are my feelings? Mm. They're in your limbic brain where there's no power of speech, but all decisions are made. Mm. Wow. Okay, that's deep. Now, how do I get to those things? We manifest the signals in speech, yes. in actions. These are all measurable. So good news for the you know, the engineer in me is I can, I can go figure those things out. Um, Derek, we can do it in body language when we're just with each other. I mean, so we're always manifesting signals about our feelings. Mm. Now, math is letting us uh, harvest them, um, mm. learn them so that you can get to that prompt because it, advertising is, advertising's job is to cause an emotion to take action. Hmm. Now, that's not marketing. That's not word of mouth, but that's advertising's job. Okay, if I'm going to cause an emotion, um, you know, it better jar me, make me turn my head. Now, I'm not going to run ads to say, you're going to die today. But hmm. that would cause me to look. 
Years ago, I worked in TV advertising and I did an ad for a church. And I, I came up with some really creative ideas and they did one. Unfortunately, the ad got pulled after it ran a few times. But all it was, was a man uh, laying, he had shorts on, but no shirt. He just laying there, right? And uh, and all it did was just scan, it was in black and white, just scanned across his entire body. And then it went down to his foot and there was a toe tag that showed that he had been deceased. And it came up, you know, I don't remember what it was, Allegheny Church of the Brethren, call now before it's too late. and. People were like viscerally <laughs> responded to that and, and, ad, right? <laughs> you I mean, know? That is really good. And actually, my ad yeah. was uh, misstated. Uh, I don't know if it's today. God willing, you and I have a lot of days left. You, you are going to die. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's got yeah. out of this thing called life alive. So, right. That's true. So, if it's the toe tag, if it's the thought, advertising's job is to get you to turn your head. Yeah. Okay. But that's just the start of the journey. Now, yeah. you know, you follow uh, the funnel of, okay, For now sure. I'll consider you. Now mm. we'll be in a relationship, an engagement. I'll try mm. you. I'll buy. But the end of the journey, Derek, is, oh, I'm loyal. I come back more often. I really like you. I like your brand, mm. like your product, like your service, because then I become an advocate. What does an that's advocate right. do for you? Word of mouth. So for you. They sell, I share with people. others about my experience. Yeah. It's the best. So the journey from advertising to word of mouth mm. should be every marketer's journey. And then they ought to start mapping it. How do I get there? How do I spend less on advertising and more on word of mouth? Go to anybody and say, can I see your word of mouth strategy? Go to any <laughs> marketer and ask them that. Any one of them. And they won't produce it. I believe this process is the process to have that strategy because that's the that's the thing that'll change hearts and minds. You're you're so right. Listen, Kevin, I'm going to break this into two episodes because I think we're at about okay. 25 minutes already and I don't even think we're started yet. So let's do this, folks. I'm going to wrap this episode. If you want to find out more, go to AIadvertising.com. I'm going to bring Kevin right back. We're just going to keep the camera rolling. We'll cut this one out. We'll do a part two. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. And I think we can get to a little deeper place on this too, about how AI is affecting this. So we'll see you all next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. All right, I feel like we had to cut that short. So we're gonna do a second episode with Kevin as well. Talk specifically about what AI advertising is, how he's harvesting and mining this data out of these data lakes and through these structured uh, data pools and and how we're being targeted for advertising on each uh, and every device that we touch or use. Uh, I I'd, I'd also encourage you to check out something timeline.google.com. If you don't believe what's being said in these episodes, I challenge you to go over there, take a look, put in a date, any date in the last 10 years, and see the information that is stored on you every location you've ever been, the exact number of minutes and seconds you've been at those locations, how long you've been in your car versus how long you've been in the restaurant or at your home. When you have that data, you can compile it using AI with other data to determine who lives in a home, who they travel with, who they're influenced by, who influences their buying decisions. This is all incredible data that's available to us and should be used by you because if you're not using it, your competitors are. All right, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're listening on audio, check out our YouTube channel. If you're here on YouTube, go over and subscribe to our podcast on Apple and Spotify. And until next time, I'm Derek Maines. Thanks for listening to The Convergence. If you want more information about the topics you've heard here today, reach out to us at theconvergencepodcast.com.